Good evening. A 23 year old Coal Lake man is dead following a two vehicle crash in Bonneville last night. It happened around 7 p.m. at the intersection of 45th Street and 45th Avenue. RCMP say the driver of a motorcycle struck the passenger side of a minivan. Now the motorcyclist was not wearing a helmet and was killed on scene. A 12 year old boy in the minivan was seriously injured and flown by Stars to Edmonton. Now everyone else in the minivan suffered minor injuries. Police say their preliminary investigation suggests that the motorcyclist was speeding and ran a yield sign moments before the crash. The investigation is ongoing. Well, two of the candidates in the running for the PC leadership race visited the border city this week. As we showed you yesterday, Thomas Lukasik was here for two days, while Jim Prentice shared his vision for the future with residents yesterday. We have to have a, a frank discussion about some of these issues, and this province has got to be fair to everybody. Now. Prentice says some of the main concerns expressed by Lloydminster residents were with road maintenance and the amount of provincial funding provided. Again, uh, this is not the first time I've heard this. But I think it reflects uh, frustrations in Lloydminster and this region um, about the fact that a lot of energy resources flow out of the, out of the region, but the dollars uh, to maintain services are not necessarily here. Prentice commented on the changes to the temporary foreign workers program, saying he believes they are going to cause problems and won't be workable. He says Alberta's situation is unique because of the economic growth. This province accounted for, you know, essentially 100% of the job growth in Canada last year. And so we have a red hot economy and people can't find workers. It's not just foreign workers, they can't find workers, period. He says to resolve this issue, there needs to be a discussion and agreement made between the Prime Minister and the Premier of Alberta. To arrive at a consensus on everything from the uh, nominees on immigration programs, to how we're going to try to get Canadians here from elsewhere to take up jobs that, that we need in Alberta. The first round of voting begins on September 6. Well, it's a yearly tradition thousands of people from around the region enjoy. The Vermilion Parade and Three Day Fair begins tomorrow. And as Anna Stanza reports, besides the dozens of rides to enjoy, fairgoers can expect exciting entertainment and a few celebrities to drop by. From preparing cotton candy to setting up the rides, vendors and organizers are hard at work making their finishing touches. We're uh, on countdown, so we've got a few jobs left today and uh, the fair always comes, so we have to be ready. So uh, we'll be ready. They'll be expecting 20,000 people or more to drop by and Greg Lumley says there are events going on every day. The one thing we have coming is the six horse hitch that was grand champion at the Calgary Stampede. We'll be showing here in the six horse hitch class and that's at three o'clock on Friday and Saturday. And of course, it all begins with a parade. Hi there, come on over to the parade. Parade Marshal Russ Cameron says there were 133 entries last year and have received calls early in May from as far as Camrose, Wainwright and Cold Lake. We're trying to get a little more noise in it this year. It was a little quiet last year, so we want everybody to have music on their entry. And we have uh, uh, a few sort of celebrities and politicians. Daniel Smith is coming, and of course the regular politicians, Dr. Starkey and uh, Leon Benoit might be here. Um, and of course there's some other local uh, celebrities we have. Lumley also says they couldn't have prepared for the parade and fair without the help of hundreds of volunteers. Community-wise, we have a great relationship with Lakeland College, which includes the fire training school and uh, the town of Vermilion, and then uh, just the members of the community at large to come together on our workbee day. For the full schedule of events, you can visit vermilionag.ca or download the fair app on the website. Anna Stanislau, Newcap News. Now the parade begins at 11 a.m. and RV camping is free outside of the grounds. Well, becoming stranded on the highway can be a stressful situation and that is exactly what happened to a British Columbia resident while in Lloydminster. But he got a helping hand from some good Samaritans to get back on the road. Graham McCann has more. Stan Oleksiak was on his way back to Langley, British Columbia from Kyle, Saskatchewan when his truck broke down on the highway. The truck was towed to the Husky truck stop in Lloydminster on Thursday of last week where he attempted to fix it with no luck. It was around four days until his wife emailed Lloyd FM for help. You no, know, he bought some parts and put them on but just was unable to get the truck running. Um, so we had Tirecraft 
was gracious enough to send a, a service unit over to try to help him out to get his vehicle going. It had broken down, overheated, needed a water pump timing chain. And we put it all together and we discovered that uh, it, had been, it overheated and uh, the motor is now uh, finished, it's cooked. The good news is that Newcap got Stan a bus ticket back to Langley so he can have time to gather himself and think about what to do next. The truck, however, could be going to the scrapyard after Tirecraft finishes assessing the engine. From my understanding, the engine's blown, so it may be a case of whether, you know, based on the age of the vehicle and, and the cost of doing that, whether it's even, you know, worth it. We're going to take care of his equipment for him. Hopefully we'll get it going for him and when he comes back he'll be able to take it home with him. Stan did not want to be interviewed but said that he is very thankful and although he didn't have any friends around in Lloydminster, he certainly made some. You know, a guy's in need, you do what you can to try to help him on his way. Graham McCann, New Cap News. This summer in full swing, parents may be looking at ways to keep their kids occupied. The Cold Lake Public Library has weekly programs to do just that. Today, kids were able to channel their inner Batman for the day. Fraser Snowden has more. These little caped crusaders had one mission, to have as much fun as possible in many different ways. Kids could get their faces painted, make Batman cookies, and just have a good time. Because uh, it's been 75 years since um, Batman was introduced into comic books. And so they encouraged libraries and other institutions to participate as well. And a few of us who are excited about Batman decided to go ahead and, and put on a Batman day. It was like Halloween in the summer for the kids as they came dressed for the part to save the day. Some as Batman, Robin, and even Batgirl. I like how we get to do lots of stuff here and we get to dress up and do activities. The library has different programs every week for kids and has invited guests to come speak to them throughout the summer. Parents are thrilled with the choices their children have there. Well, I think they're a good opportunity for kids to come out and meet one another. They got, uh, you know, there's different activities for them to do that's never a boring time here. Um, and it's well put on by the town and by the city. We made bat belts for them. They have little utility belts. They have masks, and one of the grandmas made uh, bat capes for them. So they're just having a lot of fun dressing up. In Cold Lake, Fraser Snowden, New Cap News.